Last week of year A in the lectionary cycle, next week we begin the cleverly named year B with the anticipation of Christmas on the first Sunday of Advent. Before we can get to the prophecy of Jesus' birth, we listen to Jesus give his disciples farewell instructions before he faces his death. He's been telling them to be prepared for his return. It's reasonable for them to think that he will return during their lifetimes. Would they have remained faithful to Christ's cause if they knew it would cost them their lives? Jesus says, be ready. And don't just sit around waiting. Use the gifts God has given you. These gifts to share. And be bold, be creative using those gifts so that more people and new generations can find the peace and contentment of serving God's creation. Our passage this week splits the world into two kinds of people the sheep and the goats. The soft, cuddly sheep get into heaven and the ornery, stubborn goats go to hell. (laughs) Yes! Finally, Jesus quits being all lovey-dovey and gets down to some good old-fashioned testament judgment. We post-modern American Christians tend to feel that when it it comes to our lives being judged, it's old-fashioned. It offends our sense of freedom. I mean, we're Americans after all. Now, why are we so confident that an unconditionally loving God will not judge us harshly? One problem with the Bible other than its various translations, is that it's not a book with all of the answers neatly listed in the appendix. (laughs) We have to dig for answers that might take us where we don't want to go. As he has throughout his teaching career, Jesus uses an example that his audience will recognize. If Jesus were telling the story today, instead of uh, sheep and goats, maybe it would be uh, iPhone versus Android users. I don't know, something like that. Now, even though shepherds grazed and moved their sheep and goats as one big herd, Jesus tells the story of being separated and judged accordingly. Sweet, cuddly sheep to the right. Ornery always looking for trouble, goats to the left. And think about the many uses of the flocks of sheep and goats back in that day. Both animals were a source of milk, meat, fabrics. The sheep provided wool for garments to keep the chill out. The goat carcass provided storage containers, you know, Tupperware of its day. (laughs) A person of wealth generally had many more sheep than goats in their flock. Now, goats already had a reputation in Hebrew life. During the ceremony known as the Day of Atonement, the Jewish priest would sacrifice a goat to atone for the sins of the people. And then another goat was sent away into the wilderness, symbolizing that the sins of the people were now on that goat and carried far away from them. And that's where we get the term scapegoat. 
sheep and goats is symbolism that Jesus' audience would have understood very well. The goat and sin were symbolically connected. His audience also understood the intention of the message. You know, all of us have a finite, unknown to us, number of days. And this passage conveys that sense of urgency. You know, we only have the chance to get our lives right while we are alive. You know, why would we risk wasting our lives living selfishly? Serving the devil, so to speak. You know, do we see the opportunities for service that God puts clearly in our view, or do we choose to ignore them? When the opportunities present themselves, you know, do we jump right in with both feet and have fun getting to know our fellow volunteers and helpers, or, or, or do we keep our distance because, well, we judge. You know, the goats don't deserve our help. They're just taking advantage of us. And in some cases, you're right. Last Saturday, we had two carloads of women senior citizens that showed up towards the end of the distribution time for our Thanksgiving food distribution. Well, they got here as soon as they could after they made the rounds of the other two places that they went to. And one of those places was Zion Lutheran Church over in Cornersburg. I know that because the flyer from Zion Lutheran fluttered out of the car when they exited. And that car was already full of food and turkeys. It's the kind of thing that proves a cynic right. We're all just being played for a bunch of suckers. But Jesus says a true sheep wouldn't notice such a thing. Well, when did we see you hungry, Jesus? The sheep asks. A true sheep doesn't judge whether someone else needs or deserves our help. A sheep provides it without even thinking about it. You fed me. You gave me clothes and medicine. You even visited the prisoner, Jesus says. In the weeks prior to last week's event, helpful sheep showed up to unload the literal tons of groceries and stock the shelves. Last Wednesday, our Boy Scout Troop 105 carried the remaining cans and boxes upstairs and staged them in these pews. And Thursday evening, 40 people from the age of two to Cub Scout age to their mid-80s, eagerly packed 390 bags with canned vegetables, stuffing mix, oatmeal, fruit, you name it, everything needed to share breakfast and dinner on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> and then on Friday, Beth calls me, and she says, Skip at the community kitchen has more squash and cabbage than they could possibly use before it spoils. Would we be able to distribute it? And Harry shows up with his van loaded literally floor to ceiling with squash and cabbage. And on Saturday, Fifteen helpers came to do everything from picking up the turkeys to running the registration table to bagging up the squash and cabbage to helping very appreciative folks 
to their cars with their food. We were prepared for 130 families. 147 showed up. That's more than 400 people. Sheep and goats all mixed together. And it wasn't our job to judge who was who. It did give Harry the opportunity to say 147 times, come back and see us on Sunday. How many people have you invited to church? Harry has set the bar pretty high. (laughs) The sheep serve out of their good nature. The goat, whatever only sees what they need. On Saturday, a man that comes fairly regularly to the pantry asked me, can I come back and help sometime? The sheep serve out of their good nature. So who are you? Servant sheep, or judgmental goat. Consider this cultural tidbit. The shepherds of Jesus' day would gather the goats at nightfall to the center of the flock, while the sheep would spend the night on the outside of the flock. That's because the goats, with their thinner coats, needed the protection of the warmth. The sheep, greater in number and with their thick woolen coats, didn't need to be sheltered from the cold. You see, it is the role of the sheep, especially in the times of cold and darkness, to protect the goats and not to judge them no matter how many turkeys are in their car. Amen. Those who give without interest.